All right. Yeah. Ready? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Grand Blue Radio number 360. Uh, I'm down in Los Angeles for the Arc World Tour, so this is my uh, roaming setup. DJ, uh, I'll be seeing you next week, and then you'll be you. You are going to Slashback. Was that finalized? Yeah, I'm going to Slashback. I just need to figure out how I'm going to get to the airport. Sick, awesome. Um, I'm glad to see you for the next couple of weeks. That'll be fun. Uh, all right. I mean, consider, considering that you co- you come in on Saturday, and then we get, check out the hotel Sunday. <laughs> yeah, that'll be SakuraCon will be very very fly by night. But then after that, we can probably try and hang out in your home area, some some place sometime, and then Slashback, which is just you know NorCal, and you spent enough time in NorCal, we know where to go. We know the places you, that we want to hit. I mean, I know more places in NorCal than I do in Seattle. That's fair. All right. You have to ask Shaka for food stuff or Dennis. <laughs> just, ask, just ask Dennis. All right, we'll do. All right, so here we go. We got um, Flash Gala that came in last week. And uh, this is one of the better ones that we've had in a very long time because it's both swimsuit season and Flash. And uh, let's start. Uh, Little Bird Girl? Little Bird Girl first? Uh, yeah, let's go with Feeny. All right, so Kohara Konomi gets her first. This is before uh, Haino I gets her fourth, so good good job on her. <laughs> but uh, little little bird daughter, so yeah, they, they didn't name her Ho. Yeah, uh, Resplendent Phoenix. She's in that character is in Princess Connect now, right? We just got her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, not got she came her. From Rachel Blooded. Yeah, yeah. All right, so this is our version of Resplendent Phoenix, uh, a little bird girl who. No longer can travel at relativistic speeds. Uh, um, she is a healer, but she's she's definitely a healer. But so, where do you want to start? Like, you've have you used this character much yet? Uh, I used her recently. Yeah, I, she's really good. So let's let's start with the passives. Okay, the passives are a good thing here. All right. So they said that they were going to change the text on happiness found. Uh, is this the accurate text yet, or is it the old text still? For happiness found uh that should be the right text okay so risha hark is her skill two so she gets a skill two at, at the end of turn if an ally is either almost knocked out or took big damage which is usually like 20 to 25 percent of your health is that about yeah. right okay and below 25 aka uh you, you could use her with uesis if you want oh it just happens every turn um, for a little bit mm-hmm. until, you use, uh, until uses goes above but uh right you know this thing only heals for 1500 is it a full al- yeah it's al- all allies okay all right so that's that's the minor one what's what's enigma of the phoenix like what are we looking at here this has like nine lines of text all right she starts off with uh minus 70 percent defense <laughs> she has the same defense as our boy levy yeah, too bad, too bad, unlike Levy, you actually want her dead for, uh, like, as fast as possible. Right, okay. Keep going. Uh, heals a thousand every turn. Okay, sure. And she starts off with Enigma of the Phoenix and an auto-revive. What happens with Enigma of the Phoenix? Something happens when she auto-revives. So, um, when she dies the first time, she gets a new buff called Enigma Ablaze, which gives her the following things. So it's, she gets permanent chaser once she dies. How big is that? 20%. Uh, following up with other stuff, 20% healing spec, tw- and 220% defense. Why 220? What a weird number. Uh, to make it 150. Oh, because she starts with the minus 70 always. Okay, there we go. That's That makes sense. Okay. But she, she then also gets max HP, um, all of the debuffs go away, and she gets. Wait, oh, this is all part of the same thing. Every five the, turns, she goes to full. Turns. She removes all of her own debuffs and then gets herself full meter for every five turns after she revives. Yep. Also, to note that uh, when she revives, all her skills, his skills come back. There is a really and- funny exception to that, by the way. If she kills herself by hitting a skill into a shield, the way the um, the order of operations works is that she will die in the middle of the resolution of the skill. So, but because it was the skill was in the middle, in the middle, it won't, it won't go off cooldown. Yeah. I mean, there's, uh, what? It makes there's only sense. only one skill. 
Yeah. It, but it's really funny that, like, that's the way it works. Like, it makes sense when you think about it, but if you see it for the first time, like, what happened? <laughs> uh, something to note is also okay. that Enigma of the Phoenix uh, does not be is not removed on knockout, so she can use it multiple times if she Wait. has another auto revive. Really? Okay. Oh wait. So, so yeah, if you so, if you put an auto revive on her, she she could just okay uh, re redo the entire thing again. What else gives auto revive to another character in fire? So there's Europa Summon that's usable only once. Um, what else is it in fire that provides auto revive? Well, I'll think about it later. That's something to note for the future. Okay. So then once she has all of this stuff, then every skill gets enhanced and her CA gets enhanced. So where, where do we start from this to show like what the super powered version of her does? Uh, well, we should talk about her CA first. Okay, her CA. So it gives everybody on your team a uh, fire chaser. At 10% for three turns. If she's um, pre-revive, then it eats 20% of her max HP and there's a special thing that lets you know, yes, this can kill her. Yep, that's a good thing because you want her to revive as soon as possible. And then once she is revived, it doesn't cost HP anymore. And it does an extra hit, it looks like? The next one. Uh, 1.2 million. Okay. So the a whole part where it gives everybody bonus fire damage, like how big is that again? You said it's... What, the chaser? The, yeah. Uh, it's only 10%, it's but... Only 10 but it was given uh, to you by a CA, so it stacks with anything that didn't give it to you with a CA. Correct. Yeah. Okay, okay. And then here's her buff, Sunfire Spark. Which... Okay, so before... Uh, uh, right. it was a, it's a three-turn buff that lasts six, uh, on six-turn cooldown. Okay. Yeah. And it's uh, only on herself. It's only on herself. Until she's died once. Yep, and so the uh, the buffs to herself is 50% fire attack, 30% uh, TA, amp uh, normal attacks by 10%, for, uh, 10 amp skill damage damage for 10%. Skill damage amp is huge, holy cow. All right. And because it's uh, fire attack percent, it works with Shiva's passive. Right. And then the one that she casts every turn, uh, if somebody's almost knocked out, has... Uh, also, but oh, the, the, the thing is also... It becomes a six out of six uh, on revive. Yeah. Okay. These are all so, uh, things that are super good. Yeah, they're very welcome in hard content. No defense, but that's oh, that's fine. There's other stuff going on. All right. So here's Risha Hark, which is a nuke, and you said it was only a fifteen hundred heal. Uh, fifteen hundred. But remember that her weapon also in uh, increase if you have a main hand will increase your healing. Ah, uh, there we go. But it, all, it has the very welcome two-turn cut to debuff durations on it. And yep. uh, it dispels when she's revived once. Okay. So, yep. And it's a five-turn cooldown. And since it can also cheat out its own turns, it's pretty mm -hmm. good. And so the last thing here is that she gives herself all sub, which is one of the ways that she's supposed to try and like get herself killed. And when she's, uh, when she's, oh, okay. when she's attacked... Uh, Fire damage to a foe, hit eh, hit to attack, and also singed. It's her only singed. It's her only singed, yeah. Uh, but it really helps other things that request singed, of which there are two very important ones in fire, one of which was added at the same time as her. Um, but so you, You're not relying on this to, to give you singed, though. Yeah. You're relying on everything else. Right. So added when enhanced, undying for uh, one time to herself. One time, then, one turn. Is, okay. is uh, specific. I see. Okay. And so if you attack out of turn, then this stays on. Okay. Okay. That's a very strong... Oh, yeah, that's, yeah the assassin's also one turn as well. Yeah. Okay. And then the other thing about this is her weapon. So let's go into the other part of this package. Yeah, the Phoenix's Torch. I went to the wrong spot. Uh, base CA had uh, a skull cooldown by one for MC. Uh, when, for sorry, you get mirror image everybody. I think that's self survivability. Uh, Inferno's precocity is uh, pretty good. So, big crit, big healing cap. Yeah. 
And the part where it's big crit, like, with now that you can overcap skill on crit, yeah. Yeah. And then the the important things of main hand only. Uh, at 120, you get God Render, and at 150, you get uh, Prayer of the Phoenix. And so, the monk condition: if your MC's hit points are 50 percent or more, then you do after normal spell. attacking, you get six hit nuke. That's 140k each, and then also you raise your, the singe by one. So it gives you like a better version of Mantra, because Mantra happens at the end of the turn. It doesn't help you with uh, um, with Omens, and this just goes immediately. Okay. And you can use this with Mantra! Right. And then he has after, a staff. <laughs> and then after that we have the Prayer of the Phoenix, which is also a huge, huge boost to survival. Uh, MC get, uh, heals 500 to the entire party and gives everyone 10 meter. At the end of turn. Yeah. Uh, between these two things, the new weapon and new character, like, Fire has been given so many new tools in hard content. Yeah, Fire is, like, it's so busted right now. We need to give something to other, other uh, elements now. Uh, is there anything else to say about Fenny, or should we go and see what other elements were given? Uh, she's literally, I'm a healer, but <laughs> The whole and package has a lot going on. <laughs> Like she's under heal, but she does so much damage. She uh, she does so. Uh, uh, she's a tank. Yeah, she, she has two hostility nodes, by the way. Oh, does she? Amazing. Yeah, she has two hostility nodes and a and a cap up. Wait, a, when a skill damage cap? When she doesn't have her skill three up, does she have any benefit for being targeted, or is it only when it, the? I mean, the extra stuff. Like, I mean, does, you want her dead as, po- as soon as possible. Right. Fair enough. And also, uh, she has 150 defense. Oh yeah, huh? Okay. Fair yeah, enough. you know, she's she's more likely to survive. Okay. Also, the fact that she also fully restores herself every five turns. So <laughs> that's a lot. All right, uh, we ready to move on? Yeah. So next up, we have Magus. I don't have this character. Do you? Oh, I do. This character is sick. Okay, so I'll have you lead this one again. So here's Magus. She's Dark Staff. Uh, where do we start? Uh, go to our passives. Those passives are really important. So Proud Origin Beast. When a foe has 10 or more debuffs, then you activate Malefice Demolio, which is her skill 1. So Yep, and her skill 1 is that she does 6, six, six nuke, removes a, one buff from the enemy, gives herself 10 meter, and uh, if her skill 3 is up, uh, does 12 hits instead. You know, in the element that has an easy access to supplemental skill damage. Yeah, especially since we have the tenth birthday tickets to just say, "I would like an agonize now." Yeah, I would like, I would like three agonizes. Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> I'm allowed three. <laughs> um, and then, how many of those debuffs does she provide herself? It's so it's one for dark ensorcelment. Or how uh, many does it count as? Corrosion, to, uh, toxicosis, glaciate. On uh, these are all skills too. Well, either way. Mm-hmm. So that's. That's four of them there, and then how many does this count as when she puts Desperatio up? Is it three? Uh, 20% attack down, 20% defense down, accuracy down. So it's, is it counted as three separate ones, though, or is it a single debuff? That doesn't I don't really know, I just have like a billion debuffs on this thing anyways. I mean, that's fair. It, it's really easy, especially with, like, what, Halmel having permanent debuffs. Uh, this Verado is might as well be a permanent debuff because it's six six. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then the thing is that there's so the the quote unquote downside where while she has this up, she loses hit points every turn. Like how big how big of an actual downside is it? Um, ten percent of her max cap of five thousand, and it goes through shields. Oh, but goes, okay. there's just a lot of ways to just keep her alive, anyways. Okay. Like that, there's a reason why the, the full auto setup use it use it, it gives her a drain from uh, Co. That makes sense. And so the other passive, by the way, so when when she has dark ensorcelment up the the Desperadio skill three, then she, this is the first time this is this line of text has been relevant. Boost to dark allies' skill success rate. Yep, ten percent. Is that enough to get uh, Summer Oz at 100% or is it still not 100? 
I think with the with your opus, it gets to adds up. Yeah, <laughs> amazing. Finally, all it took uh, was... also someone will steal damage. Fifty k. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, it's, it's really nutty that she she provides both oh, toxicosis and initiate in an element that doesn't that. used to do it. Mm -hmm. Well, toxicosis dark can do with Tanya, but yeah, but you're, you're playing Tanya, and Tanya only does like one thing. Yeah, as opposed to this and character that, who... that, that is resisted by a lot, of, a lot of hard content now. Yeah. All right. So massive dark damage will follow, and then her CA ends cooldown for skills one and two. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the setup I use in the in the full auto, uh, the full auto of Cosmos until I die. Mm -hmm. uh, she CAs like at the like almost every turn. Mm -hmm. So it's what Fediel and who's the th who's the third Co? You said it's Co. To keep her alive, so Fediel from Eater Co to keep her alive. Yep. Okay. And the uh, and uh, the, th the thing is that you get you get meter from the uh, the Fediel uh, shield. You get uh, meter every at the end of turn for having enough debuffs, which you do because Co and uh, Co and uh, Fediel give the debuffs on their own too mm -hmm. that are not her, not the same as hers. Right. So, yeah, so it's just a, it's just super good. Yeah, um, basically, it, it's an interesting like concept where if you already had Hal Mal and you already had Lich, then she doesn't necessarily do enough that's different from them to make her a must-have. But she's a very nice to have because I mean, you personally have now started doing Cosmos full auto with this, which yeah, is a I, huge change. Her, One of the things is that yeah. uh, because of uh, sometimes the boss of Cosmos does not put enough buffs on herself mm -hmm. that she's actually better than Hal Mal in some in some, uh, some parts. Right, at least on full auto. On manual, Hal Mal more than fine. Yeah, but that's playing manual, so you know it's a different thing. It's a different axis that you're attacking from. So yeah, like I actually put. Uh, I think I think I actually put the uh, uh, the meter gain. Uh, opus. Uh, not opus. Uh, Ultima. Yeah, Ultima. Not for uh, not not because of MC because MC already maxes it out, but for the other characters in this to gain meter. Okay, but yeah, like this is super strong. But I also don't feel bad that I don't have her. It's just like it doesn't. She doesn't. Uh, make me feel left out but she's still still very strong so i like where she ended up essentially oh yeah she also beats debuff omens really easily mm -hmm. because she it, it just on her skill too which you're see if you're seeing every turn it's super good uh right. but also she keeps you out of red uh because with, because it's 12, with Ko, 12 because hits a you, turn 12 hits a turn uh, at the end of turn so if you're seeing a bunch, uh, she'll just uh, she'll just do it. Oh yeah, that's something that Lich has been used for since uh, Cosmos started as well. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. And then Co, Co also does the hits as well because it targeted. Right. Is a keyword on on Co. Okay. So yeah. Anything else to say about Magus? Uh, no, really good. Okay. Corrosion's always good, anyways. Toxicosis is amazing. Glacier's uh, great to have. All right, last one for today. Let's talk about Horus, the new... I think she doesn't officially have a group name, so there's no, like, Diviners group that uh, they're giving, which would probably tip their hand, but they're probably going to release all six of them, right? Uh, not all not all in swimsuit, though. True. So anyway, here's Horus, and I have been using this character extensively. So I at least I just, oh wait, I just looked at her staff. It's kind of it's kind of amazing. Her staff. Yeah, the well, wasser of of uh, Horus. Does the weapon can, actually uh, like? Let's see. I'll take a look. Light, light attack of chaser. Um, as a as a CA. Oh, as a CA. Okay, but as a, as a staff CA. Oh, okay. Majesty Fandango as the actual skills on it. It only goes up to three stars at the moment, but... Yeah, I can't wait for this to get a four-star. Hold on. Yeah, 
I was going to say, that sounds attractive. All right, so back to the character. Um, so things that uh, Light could do, but couldn't do in this way, like she interacts with a few things that are new. So number one, uh, she actually has something that says either Ascension or Faded Chain. So she has a buff called Eye of Wajet, and it keeps falling off and then keeps coming back up. Uh, yeah, it falls off after after uh, three turns. No, she starts off with a three turn one, and then uh, it's technically three turns uh, mm -hmm. when you uh, when you uh, uh, full chain or fade, uh, fade chain. By the way, skilled resist. Yeah, <laughs> which all right. So turn one, the normal thing is you just have this available instant CA standby to everybody on your team who's light, and you get a hundred percent faded chain. So she starts with it. It's a it's a long cooldown, but there's a little asterisk there. Yeah, uh, go back to uh, Wajet real quick, Ian. Yeah, cool, Wajet. So at the end of the, uh, whenever you ascension or you faded chain, then you get a one turn cut to her skill cooldowns. Yeah, so we're cheating cooldowns already. We even cheated faster because it's, it has two act, uh, two activation effects. Mm -hmm. So while it's there, she has defense up. 50%. Debuff resistance up. 100%. Some, a, a small heal. 1,000. And then uplift. Oh, actually pretty good. Uplift that doesn't yep. count as the uplift icon. Yeah, it's percent and so the thing is that she stacks with uplift, which hey Zeus gives you, which you know a bunch of other characters can give you. And then, yeah, so that's a lot. It's already there, and we haven't even looked at the, what the skills actually do yet. Yeah, some of them have a, a, a special effects. effect when you have watch it. Yeah. All right. So we go to skill one, and then go go straight to the CA. All right. So skill one. So, jeez, there's so many things here. So there's light damage to a foe. Then there's the stackable hit to attack and defense. Yep, the, uh, the normal number now. Yeah. Uh, magic 40 at 10% 10, 10 to stacking. And then two random debuffs from a list. All right, the list is... Uh, these are all local. 5,000 burn, three turns of sleep, three turns of charm, three turns of petrified, three turns of blinds. Uh, three turns of accuracy down, 60%. Three turns of local uh, attack down. Three turns of local defense down. And one to two turns of paralyze. Like, half of the random ones will just say resist on them for most content. But, but you're you're throwing a lot. You're throwing a lot, a lot of them. Because it activates twice uh, when you have Maya Wadget. Yeah. And so you get the first two twice. So that's four debuffs. And then an attempt at four more debuffs. Yep, and then we go to CA because the CA is stupid. Yeah, and then the CA is when she has Eye of Wadjet, she CA reactivates, which means yep, that you will cast and, and this. You have uh, you have like eight guaranteed. Yeah, you just need a couple to land for the debuff woman for, uh, in uh it, in Agastia. Agastia. Not even just Agastia. You need, there's not even that many more that you need in like. Lucy and um, uh, hexo hexachromatic hierarch, like ten is the number that matters, and hey, she hits those on her own. Grant granted, she does have to. Uh, you do need to actually coordinate your your CAs. Yes, you actually do need to you know look at these and time them. But here's... or you could be me and be CA looping still. Yeah, I mean. You saw that uh, the what I call like the Sasuga squad is fully capable of uh, light soloing hexachromatic hierarch now, where it's her cosmos and summer Sarawell, and you just CA every turn, you get a huge amount of healing, debuffing, and hits every turn, and your main enemy is the lockout and just well triple attacking. <laughs> yeah, this is, there's no way to guarantee triple attack on this one. Yeah, but like. Here's Al Rami Al Siri, her actual skill too, which we haven't talked about yet. Um, and it's, 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 it's a blue button with a nuke. Yeah, it's a blue button with one, two, three, four debuffs on it. 
So and, yeah, and, yeah. and none of those none of those are the same ones in the list. Yeah. And you know, it has quote unquote a twelve turn cooldown, but in practice it's like what, six? In, in practice it's like five. Yeah. <laughs> this character's wild. And then the very last one here, she has this, a passive that scales based on the number of times that she has CA'd, which as a reminder, she does it two at a time, so it'll take her five turns of CAing basically. And as uh, so let's see here, it's CA damage up, CA damage cap up, CA chain burst amp, fatal chain amp. The faded the chain amp is by the way pretty funny. Immunity. Oh, we forgot to move. We forgot to move. Hey, Tone. We'll be right back. <laughs> One second. We'll be right back. We're almost done. Sorry, DJ. I totally forgot about that. <laughs> All right. So anyway, it was it. Well, we were we were. Uh, we were sidetracked. FCM, yeah, FCM. Uh, both are really good because if, if you're not running the C CB chain, uh, mm -hmm. you might not hit like some damage thresholds. Oh yeah, because it lets you hit like three million with the CB. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so uh, at, at each stack is 10% C damage, 5% C damage cap, 10% CB amp, 10% FC amp. So uh, most of those numbers go to 100. Jeez. <laughs> so wait, if it goes to 100, then Faded Chain goes to 3 million when you hit it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it should. That is a very important number to hit in certain raids. Well, Depends because remember that one year, you know, one year classes uh, has a higher CB. Oh, Yamato, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Huh? But yeah, uh, this... also she she also has a boost to C damage cap, uh, special CB damage cap at at ten. Yeah, this is this character is insane. Like it's funny. Like what we looked at it and we're like, this character is insane. And then um, the ratings were like. S right, S tier, and then whenever to every like few hours we would check again, and there would be another S added at the end. There was definitely another S added. I'm like, yeah, th th <laughs> did y'all? Uh, even in a vacuum, this thing is super good. What's wrong with y'all? It's pretty funny though, where it's just like she just kept getting better and better as people realized just how good all of this is as a package. But yeah, like she has the release of this character has single handedly contributed to Agastia becoming a highly farmed and hard to frankly hard to get into raid because oh, people yeah. can just bring this character and she trucks it it's you're nuts definitely, you're actually, definitely actually actually hitting the four million before you even get get to uh kaiser yeah i'm you know i'm playing a you know lumi sword grid and my cas with help are hitting like 11 million and so they're just going through the shield, and it's like, since I'm only doing that kind of damage, then go. You know? Just go. It's crazy. Yeah, the signature is great. Yeah. Um, and that said, that's it for this week, I think. Uh, we do have a few exciting things coming up in a few days, though. Um, we have... Yeah. We have the Transcendence for Light and Wind coming up for Magna. And, yeah, we'll uh, see. How, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, there's, it's gonna, that means two new fights, six new weapons total. We'll get to see what the transcended summons do, what they cost. So a lot of big things to do. So until yeah, then, I have, to, I have to wait to see what people what people say it is worth. Because yeah. I'm A M Prime will be be uh, in order the grid the summon space is really cramped. Yeah, the thing is that. Uh, Actually, because it's really good for me personally because I'm still on Magna Wind and Magna Light. And so just like, especially since I'm actually on double Lumi for this because I'm working with Cosmos Daggers at the moment and also the new um, Lucy Zero Chains. It's nuts. Anyway. Uh, but yeah, I'll just go out on just this, uh, you know, <laughs> this good old seven chain that we're doing here in uh, Agastia now. These, this is what the uh, raid has come yeah, to. I yeah, I don't think it hit extension. I don't know. 
I think he had Super Ascension. <laughs> All right. So anyway, uh, yeah, and we're also going to see some fun things at uh, Arc World Tour this weekend. I'll be heading to those finals, and um, you know, I'm guessing that they're going to show more of Band and Beatrix there. That'll be fun. It's always fun to see the uh, trailers for Rising stuff. Yeah. So anyway, uh, thanks for joining me, DJ. I'm glad you're, here, you're sounding better. Uh, I hope that when I'm there next week, I can hear you at 100%. Yeah, let's, we'll see. I, I yeah. should be fine by then. Knocking on wood. Man, this, these numbers are so high now. <laughs> what happened? Yeah, you don't, you don't even have the uh, uh, Kaiser of either. Yeah, seriously, the shield's still up. Yeah, they 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 heavily nerfed the the mitigation on this one. Yeah, that's actually why I can do this because otherwise, uh, Cosmos would be doing zero damage, like be failing all the omens. But anyway, all right. Thanks for joining me, guys, DJ, and we'll see you next week. Later. Later, all.